So right now, America's tax code is a total dysfunctional mess. The current system has cost our nation millions of American jobs, trillions and trillions of dollars, and billions of hours wasted on paperwork and compliance. It is riddled with loopholes that let some special interests, including myself, in all fairness, this is going to cost me a fortune, this thing. Believe me. Believe me. This is not good for me. Me, it's not so. I have some very wealthy friends. Not so happy with me, but that's okay. You know, I keep hearing Schumer, this is for the wealthy. Well, if it is, my friends don't know about it. <laughs> I have to explain why. Now, it is great for companies, because companies are going to bring back jobs, and we're lowering the rates very substantially. But right now, we're bringing the rates down from 35% which is totally non-competitive, the highest industrialized nation in the world, by far, and we're bringing it all the way down to 20%. But that's good. That's good for everybody in the room, whether you have a company or whether you want a job, because we're going to bring back jobs. And what we've had is a massive giveaway to foreign countries, which encourage businesses to relocate offshores. And you've seen what's happened. Before this, this is really I'm most proud because as bad as our tax code is, we have Toyota, we have big car companies coming back in, building plants in Michigan and other places. We have a lot of businesses coming back in, and they see what's happening. They see what's going on. That's why they're doing Our tar current code is a giant, and really it is, it's a self-inflicted economic wound. It's been that way for so many years, and nobody wanted to do anything about it. But all that will change, and it will change immediately if Congress sends a tax cut and reform bill, the biggest tax cut in the history of our country, bigger than Reagan. If they send it to my desk, I promise all of the people in this room, my friends, so many friends in this room, it's a great state, I promise you I will sign it. I promise. I will not veto that bill. There will be no veto. Under the plan moving forward in the Senate, a typical family of four earning $75,000, as an example, will see their taxes go down by as much as $2,000. That's a lot. Now, we're doing that not just to help people. We're doing that because it helps our country. You're going to take that 2000 and maybe you'll save some, and you're going to spend some. And we're going to make product back in our country again. You know, it's going to be made here. It's going to be made elsewhere, but it's going to be made here. We're opening up plants. We're opening up factories. And we're going to be great to small business. Wait till you see the final product. Wait till you see what finally comes out in what I call the mixer. The beating heart of our plan is a tax cut for working families. That's what it is. We're going to make sure... <laughs> that you keep more of your hard-earned money. We're going to make sure also that you have a job that you want. You're going to have choice. You know, in education, we now have choice. Good word. Here, you're going to have a choice. You're not just going to have one job. You're going to have a choice of many jobs. People are moving back into our country. Under our plan, the first $12,000 of income earned by a single individual will be totally income tax free. Zero. And a married couple won't pay one dime of income tax on their first $24,000 of income. Zero. Our plan will significantly increase the child tax credit and make it available to more middle-class families because the single most important investment our nation can make is in our children. Do we agree? You agree? You better agree. Families will also benefit from a new credit for other dependents like a child in college or an elderly loved one. We have our mothers, our fathers, you have your grandparents, you have people that are elderly that have done a fantastic job. They've grown old, you want to help them. 
Now we are going to help you help them. We're also going to eliminate tax breaks and complex loopholes taken advantage of by the wealthy. Who are they? I don't know. I think my accountants are going crazy right now. It's all right. Hey, look, I'm president. I don't care. I don't care anymore. I don't care. Some of my wealthy friends care. Me, I don't care. This is a higher calling. Do we agree? As Hillary said, what difference does it make? It made a difference. Made, it made a big difference. Made a big, big difference. We want a tax code that is simple and fair, and that's for all Americans. The plan that senators will be voting on this week, hopefully as soon as possible, closes the loopholes that corporations use to shift their profits to tax havens, and it eliminates deductions for CEO salaries over $1 million. You see what some of these people are making. A little ridiculous. I'm driving up their stock. They're making a fortune. Then they go to their board and they tell everybody what a great job they're doing. But what am I going to do? And many of them, honestly, I don't like. Uh, some of these bankers, I don't like them. And they're making a fortune. And it's one of those things. Steve knows a couple of them that I'm talking about, doesn't he? They say what a great job they do. Right now, anybody could do their job because we're making it easy for them. Because we're giving them a great and strong economy. And because we've cut regulations more than any president in the history of this country by far. And that's for full terms. That's not for 10 months. And it allows builders to build. And it allows farmers to farm. You know what I've done for farmers? Where if you had a little puddle in the middle of your field, you go to jail if you touch it, right? You know what I'm talking about. Not anymore. Not anymore. Not anymore. And it allows bankers to lend. It allows bankers to lend again. So many people came up to me and they said, we had a 20-year relationship with a bank. We never had a default. We never had a bad loan. Now we go back to the bank and they say, we can't do business with you anymore because they don't qualify, even though they're better than the people that do qualify. It's incredible. But we're back to the strong days of our banks and not the days of trouble. Pre that, we're back to the strong, where bankers can make loans and community bankers can make great loans to good people. You saw what happened recently where the certain agency or bureau that was causing so much trouble to lenders where they could not lend. They just couldn't lend. It was devastating. They were going out of business. Well, we're taking care of that. We've already taken care of a big part of it. And yesterday you saw we won the lawsuit. So that's going to be taken care of automatically. <laughs> Got to get back to business. Our focus is on helping the folks who work in the mailrooms and the machine shops of America, the plumbers, the carpenters, the cops, the teachers, the truck drivers, the pipe fitters, the people that like me best. Actually, the rich people actually don't like me, which is sort of interesting, and that's fine. I, you know what? I like that trade. But really, the people that like me best are those people, the workers. They're the people I understand the best. Those are the people I grew up with. Those are the people I worked on construction sites with. All of the people who give their best each and every day to take care of their family and the country that they love. These are incredible people. They came out to vote for me. They came out to vote for us. People that worked hard, two jobs, three jobs, that hadn't voted in many years because they never had anybody they wanted to vote for. And they came out, I'll never forget, in Tennessee, a great congressman told me that early voting, said, I'll tell you what, we just went through four days of early voting. At that time, it was Mr. Trump. Now they say Mr. President. But it was Mr. Trump. He said, and if the other parts of the country are like what's happening in Tennessee, 
People are coming from all over Tennessee. They haven't voted in years, and now they've got Trump shirts, and they've got Trump hats, and they've got Trump pants, and they've got everything Trump and Trump pants. And he said, I've never seen anything like it, and I've been a politician for a lot of years. And if it's anything like Tennessee, you're going to have one hell of a victory. It turned out to be a lot like Tennessee. So. And it turned out to be a lot like Missouri. That I can tell you. Because we had a big one here. And I promise Josh that when he gets it going and he's got it in very good shape, from what I hear, he's a pop. Everybody said, Josh, it's got to be Josh. Everyone saw me. I said, who's going to run against her? Josh, Josh. And I said, Josh, when you're ready, you have my word, I'm going to come here and campaign with you. We got to get you in, OK? Got to get you in. It's not enough for the middle class to keep getting by. We want them to start getting way ahead. We're going to have them start getting way ahead. Under our plan, middle class families will not only see their tax bill go down, they will see their incomes go up by an average of around $4,000. And that's because we're going to cut taxes on American businesses so they will compete for workers, they'll raise salaries, the business is going to be happy, and the workers are going to be happy, and the country is going to be a happy place. Although, we're going to have very strong borders. Please remember that, okay? Please remember. We're going to have the wall. Don't worry about it. We're going to have the wall. We don't forget that wall. A lot of people say, now that he got elected, is he going to build the wall? The answer is absolutely more so. I think more so. It's not easy dealing with the Democrats. They want to have people pour into our country, illegals. They don't care where the hell they come from. They want to have them pour into our country. They want to raise your taxes. They don't want to take care of your military. And all they're good at, frankly, is, is obstructing. They want to obstruct. But you know what? They may obstruct, but we have gotten through all of the obstruction so far. We'll keep it going, believe me. Today, America has one of the least competitive tax rates on planet Earth. 60%, think of that. 60% higher than the average in the developed world. So our taxes are 60% higher. On my recent trip to Asia, every single one of the countries I visited, even those with communist governments, have slashed its corporate tax rates and slashed them dramatically. And it's very tough competition anyway. But when their taxes are a lot lower, it really makes it very tough. And that trip was a tremendous success. You know, we bought back $250 billion in contracts, and that's going to be over a trillion dollars very soon. That's a good... That's a good week and a half's work. Boeing came back with contracts. So many of our com companies came back, and I'm very proud of them, and we're doing great. But at the same time, we're going to fix trade, because trade's unfair. We're getting killed on trade, so we're going to fix our trade, unless anybody would like to continue with this horrible situation that we have. <laughs> our plan gets America from the back of the pack, and it'll bring us right to number one, where we were for years, but where we haven't been for decades. We're going to be right back at number one. And we're going to work on trade, but we're also going to work on military, when we defend nations that are very wealthy. And we do it for almost nothing. I say, why are we defending them? We love them. I won't mention names. But there are a lot of them. We love them. They're wealthy. One of them has a cash flow that they say is unsustainable. It's so large. Think of that. How would you like to have an unsustainable cash flow? They don't know what to do with their money. And we defend them. It's going to change, folks. We're going to defend them. But they're going to treat us fairly. And they're going to pay for their defense. Does that make sense?
And a lot of this was from many, many years ago when we defended a defeated country, and then they became strong and they became rich, and we just kept the same defense. What happened? Why didn't anybody go in and negotiate? And when I was in Asia, I spoke to a couple of the countries about it, and they looked like this. You know what this is? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That means they know they're getting away with murder, and they got to start helping us out, okay? So if you don't mind, I'll start bringing that up with some of our good friends. We're going to cut our tax rate to the very competitive number of 20 percent, as I said, and we're going to create jobs and factories will be pouring into this country, and they already are starting. A lot of people think it's going to happen. I don't want to say anything. I'm not going to talk about it. I thought we had health care, and we will have health care. It's going to happen. As soon as we get the taxes, we work on the health care, we're going to happen. Because we thought we had the votes, and then we, something happened a little strange. That's okay. When you lose by one vote, then it's called you go back. You know, some people said, oh, you failed with health care. What do you mean we failed? We didn't fail. And by the way, what happened, what happened is Obama took a long time, years, to get Obamacare, right? Again, 10 months. We've had two runs at it. We're coming closer, closer. I think now we have a plan that's going to be great. But we're not talking about it until after taxes. And then we take care of health care. Then we will have done tax cuts, the biggest in history, health care, phenomenal health care. I know you don't want this welfare reform. Does anybody want welfare reform? <laughs> and infrastructure. But welfare reform, I see it, and I've talked to people. I know people, they work three jobs, and they live next to somebody who doesn't work at all. And the person who's not working at all and has no intention of working at all is making more money and doing better than the person that's working his and her ass off. And it's not going to happen. Not going to happen. So we're going to go into welfare reform, unless Billy doesn't want it. Billy, am I okay in saying that I speak for you? He said yes. <laughs> you got a lot of friends out there, Billy. Well, we'll also cut taxes for the millions of small businesses that file as individuals. And that's going to come out of the hopper. It's getting there, and it's, it's going to be better and better. We're reducing the tax burden on businesses of all sizes and of every single kind. As a candidate, I pledge to fight for American jobs. I think it's possibly the number one reason I got elected. And I think we've done a lot better at this point than anybody ever even thought possible. Think of that. Two million jobs since the election. Two million more jobs in this country since the election. Nobody expected that. Excuse me, I didn't even expect that. <laughs> but, you know, you cut those regulations and you give people spirit and incentive. And when you have the highest ratings in terms of confidence that the country's had in many, many years, maybe ever, things happen. The tax cut will mean more companies moving to America, staying in America, and hiring American workers right here. So that's so important, right? 